Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Greg Mathers, and I run the Adesis Latvia office here. Um, a couple things before we get started is that if you are listening to the translation, interpretation in Russian, the channel is zero, and Latvian, the channel is one. Right. Um, I first met Ichak in 2008, a long time ago. He's been here a few times now, and we're lucky enough to have him again today. So I will just give the floor to him and let him take over. Thanks. And 90, it starts at 90. It does not start at 90. We need 90 minutes on the clock. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me again. How many of you already heard me? Raise your hand, how many? Oof, you came back, that's a good sign. How many of you read any of my books? Wow, so I have a big job here to tell you what's new. Otherwise, I'm going to be boring you. But before I start, I want to introduce you to my wife. Would you stand up? I'll tell you why. Because standing next to every successful man, there is a very supportive wife. Don't forget that. Okay? Thank you very much for inviting me. So let's start. The subject here is if the tape works. Ah, here it is. The subject is about healthy organizations. Many years ago, I would go visit my mother and tell her about my success. I have a new book and a new award and a new this and a new that. I wanted her to be proud of me. And she would take my hand in her hand and she would do like this and say, yes, my son, but how is your health? She says, wonderful. Then I realized all mothers do that, right? And we always, when we drink, we say to your health. Health is the most important thing. We don't realize it when we are young. Then later on in life you say, oh my God. Health is the most important thing. But not only for people, for organizations too. Because all of us want to have a successful company over time. Not only for the first two, three, four, five days, but what's called continuously successful company. To be continuously successful, you better be healthy. Because if you are not healthy, it cannot be continuously successful. And too many build a company, ta, 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 but it is sick inside. Eventually, it's not going to work. Like with a human being, you work very hard, very hard, very hard, destroy your health, and then you say, oh, it was not worth it. So the question of organizational health became my preoccupation in the last two, three years. I didn't realize that's what I was doing in my methodology. I thought I was solving problems. No, 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 no. I was dealing with organizational health. So that's what we are going to update you now, those that already heard my lectures or read my books, the latest in my thinking about how to be a healthy organization so that you can be continuously successful and not temporarily successful. So let's define what does it mean healthy? What does it mean to be healthy? Here is one definition. I'm still working on it. Everything I'm giving you is a progress report. I have not stopped thinking. You are healthy if you perform the task for which you exist. You do something while you exist. I'm not talking to you as a person, as a company. Company exists for a purpose. Now, all over the world, when I ask, what is the purpose of your organization? I'm talking business organization. The usually answer they give is profits, right? To be profitable, profitable. Wrong answer. Hear me well, wrong answer. Profits are the result of doing something right. You have to ask yourself, what should I do right so that I can be profitable? 
Because if you focus on profits, it's like focusing on happiness. I want to be happy, I want to be happy. But how do you become happy? What makes you happy? Because it's a result of. And what is the purpose of an organization if it's not profits? Profit is the result of. To serve the clients for which you exist. Because if the clients do not exist, if they leave you, you're going to be bankrupt. So your focus should be, for whom do I exist? For whom do I exist? And if I satisfy their needs, and they are coming back, and they're willing to pay more than it costs me to produce what they need, I'm profitable. Profit is the result of doing the right things. Happiness is the result of doing the right things. Health is the result of doing the right things. So let's focus on the process, not on the results. The results will come if the process is right. Focus on the process. Too many focus on the results. Ignore the process. What happens? If the process is wrong, eventually the results will be wrong. Focus on the process, which is to perform your mission. And your mission is satisfy the clients. How do you measure it? Are they coming back? You learned it from a restaurant. If you have a restaurant and the clients come once and never come back, how successful is this restaurant going to be? You're dead. Are they coming back? Same thing for a family. Are your children coming back? Is your wife coming back? Is your husband coming back? That tells you how good the family is. Coming back. Why are they coming back? Because you satisfy their needs, otherwise they will not come back. And you have to do it without losing energy. I'm not losing energy on internal fighting, on internal problems, on internal struggles. No. We're satisfying the client needs and everybody's together, no wasted energy. Okay. Because when you're sick, you lose energy. Oh, I'm tired, I cannot do anything, I'm in pain. Do you see that? When you're healthy, all the energy is available. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Are we together? Well, next question. What will make you healthy? Well, you have to make the right decisions. Which clients do I pick up? What do I do for the clients? What do I don't do for the clients? Because if you do everything for the client, maybe you're losing money. So you have to choose what to do. You have to make the right decisions. But let me tell you something. You agree with me, there is no a perfect human being that makes all the decisions by himself or herself and never makes a mistake. I don't know how many of you are religious, but even God makes mistakes. He brought the flood and killed everybody except Noah. And then after 40 days, God said, mm, it's not going to work. I made a mistake. It will not work. Then I bring the rainbow to remind me to stop because God is forgetful. Look how human is God. But we have some managers that believe they're more than God. They never made mistakes. I know everything, don't talk to me, I know what to do. None of us is perfect. Welcome to the club. So what do we need? A complementary team. That's why I introduced you to my wife. She's my complementary team. She tells me everything I do wrong. She compliments me. In your company, you need a complementary team. You cannot do it alone. And what does it mean, complementary? They are different. And by the way, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Look at whom did you marry. 
e o marido de cumprimento era teu. You fell in love with your weakness that the other party has as a strength. We need complementary team. You cannot do it alone. You need somebody who compliments you. And now let's talk about how to build a complementary team. Let's do it fast. Most of you already know it. A company to be successful, to make good decisions, it must make decisions that makes the company to be effective, which means get the job done, effective, efficiently, in the short run now, but also effective and efficient in the long run, because we want a company that will survive for a long time, be successful for a long time. So it satisfies present client needs, future client needs, efficiently now and efficiently in the future. If I can be effective and efficient now and forever, I'm happy. Thank you very much, right? I don't need any more. And what they discovered many, many years ago is that to be effective and efficient, I need like four vitamins. And I assume you read my book, you, read, you, you should know this. And if you don't, please pick up my books because I have only three hours. So I'm going very surplus. If you want to know more, read the books. Watch my videos. It's like four vitamins. If I do vitamin P, I will be functional, which means it works. It means it's effective. A, I'm systematic, organized, efficient. E, I'm proactive, looking at the future. What do I need to do now so the future I will be ready for it? And I, organic, integrated, organically, relationships, not by certain manuals, but value system, relationships, caring for each other, I will be efficient in the long run. So what we need is complementary functions in your company to fulfill the four roles. Already telling you what makes a company sick if one of the roles is missing. Let's assume in your company you don't have entrepreneurship. A big bureaucracy, all A. Everything is efficient, efficient, but there is no change and the world is changing and you're sleeping. You're not healthy. You're not adapting to change. Or you're missing A. You're working very hard, but not very smart. And what's happening? You're losing a lot of money unnecessarily. Or there is no I, which means no relationships. We kind of a, don't work very well together. We attack each other. We don't believe in each other. So a lot of energy is being wasted. Do I listen to you? I don't listen to you. Do I trust you? I don't trust you. You see the waste of energy? You need to have to have all the four functions. Now let's talk about it. These are the four roles. Here is in the company. The peer role is usually done by sales, production, they are the one to satisfy client needs. P, work, 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 work. A, administration, quality control, accounting. Are you with me? By the way, if any questions, if I'm not clear, raise your hand. Don't wait till the end for questions, because I'm building a wall, one brick at a time, so don't wait till the end. I want to be sure every brick is working. E, strategic planning, engineering, production engineering, product engineering. It's all developing new things, making changes. Finance is different from accounting. Hello, listen to me all. Finance is not accounting. Accounting is different from finance. Major mistake in many companies all over the world. Accounting looks from the past to the present. That's why the financial statements say, as of December 31, 
they don't look in the future. They're precise, that's why it's A, precisely. Okay? I must tell you a joke. Are you ready for a good joke about accountants? Two guys are in a balloon flying and they got lost in the clouds. So descend a little bit and they see a guy down on the ground. Hello, where are we? And the guy says, in a balloon. So one guy says to the other, that guy must have been an accountant, why? He gave me precise information, totally useless. I mean, this is account. <laughs> you know, they give information from the past. I'm interested in the future. Where are we going? What's wrong with us? That's finance. Where are we going? Are we making the money? Should we invest? We should not invest. Reading the financial statement, is it working, not working? Where is the money? Accounting alone, precisely wrong. Finance, approximately right. Please, there are two different functions. They usually put them together. Don't put them together. Now, for I, very good question. Who does the I function in the company? Usually, we don't pay attention to I. Nobody does the I. There is the human resources. But in most companies, human resources does which role? The A role, hiring, firing, salary administration, performance appraisal. They're in the A business. We need I. Who does the I? Who does the I? Who sees to it that the culture is positive culture, that the relationships are good? By the way, it applies to family life. In a traditional family, traditional family, 100 years ago, the man was a PE. Go out to the market, hunt, and bring the money. And the mother was the AI, getting everything organized and taking care of the children, the AI function. Modern family, she is PE, he is PE. What is the A? A maid. Who does the I? Psychologist. Always look, do we have all their four roles or not? What is missing? And if it's missing, you're not healthy. You're missing a vitamin. Okay, let's continue. So we need an organization structure where all the four roles are represented in the structure. When I look at an organization, I look at the organization chart. And I put the, the roles. I say, oops, you're missing. You're missing. Give you an example for a country. United States of America. Democracy. You have the different arms of government. Executive branch is P. Legislative branch, the legislate is E. The court Judicial system is the A. Where is the I? In America, we don't have the I. That's why America is falling apart. In many other countries, there is a president who is above all parties. He's not a politician. He's an intellectual. He's a leader. He's integrating the country. Or the king represents I. So when you look at the country, you say, do we have all the roles? What is missing? In a family, what is missing? In a company, what's missing? Are we together? So far, so good? But having a structure is not good enough. We need somebody to lead the structure. We need people. People can be also classified in PAEI. It's called styles, management styles. And you want to put the right people in the right job. You want to put a type E person in an E job. Type A person in an A job. You see this? Together so far? Look at the styles. The focus of every role. The P role focuses on what to do. 
The A roll focuses on how to do it. The E roll focuses on why not, why don't we do this, why would you do that? That's why they're always change oriented. Always want to change, why not, why not? And I is who is whom? Here, look at this. If you are a big P, AEI, you are a producer. Get the job done, come to work, work very hard. Day in, day out, normal manager. If you are P000, not healthy, not all the four roles are there. You are now a long ranger. You work alone, never delegate everything you do, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You do it everything, never delegate, working very hard, die. You see this? Why? Because not all the four roles. Here it is. Capital A, but I have some E. I'm flexible. I'm people-oriented and I'm task-oriented, but I'm mostly organized, administrator. Only A, bureaucrat. Opa. Only A, my God, the guy is, he comes on time, lives on time. What I do in the meantime is not important. Important is this, you came on time, left on time. Everything is organized. He runs a very well-controlled disaster. The company is going bankrupt, but on time. Everything is going on time. Okay, by the way, I have books about it. I'm going very fast because I have only three hours. Here's the next one. E. In my books, I call it entrepreneur, but it's wrong. E alone is not an entrepreneur. E alone is, I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. All the time have ideas, but they do nothing. Only have ideas. Yeah, probably in your company, somebody like this. He has all the ideas, but no action, you know. Only E, zero, 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 is an arsonist, starting fires all the time. All the time fires, it just he likes to have excitement, but nothing is happening on the opposite. He's burning the company down. Here it is, integrator, people-oriented. How do we work together? Only I, whatever you want. What would you like to do? Let me lead you there. He's a follower, political, adapting all the time. Sure, oh yes, oh yes. Nothing is happening. Now you get combinations. P and E is entrepreneur. I have an idea? Yes. Could you move the stand away? Sure. To move this? The problem. I need help. Because it's attached. Let's see. This is the P. You see this? You immediately jump to do it. Mr. P, very good, thank you, thank you, man. Okay, entrepreneur, idea, let's go and do it. Not just idea, let's go and do it. P.A., this is a military guy. Do, in an organized way, no discussions, no change, not the pop, 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 pop. You see, you can make any combinations. E.I. is a statesman. Let's go, the future is ours, we have a vision, bravo, all together, Dubai. Are we together? So you want to put the right person in the right job. If you are missing a role, no good. If the wrong person in the, wrong, in the right job, no good. Are we moving? Moving, so far so good. He is a real leader. Ideas, vision, and let's go and do it. Churchill. This is Churchill. Okay, guys. Next subject. You can see this differentiation of styles by a little analogy. Four people are sitting in the room with a window. They see different things. One guy sees clouds, 
mountains, lake, trees, the big picture. The other guy sees that the frame is dirty. Why is the frame dirty? What's wrong here? The third guy says, how do they open this window? How does this window work? How do they clean it? The fourth guy is looking at the first three guys. What the hell are you guys looking at? He's not looking at the window, he's looking at the people. Who sees the big picture? The big picture. Which type? Which type? The E, right? Who sees that the frame is dirty? What's wrong with this? A. Who says, how does it work, the functionality of the window? P. And the eye looks at the people. What are you guys looking at? In a meeting, you can see that all the time. I sit in a meeting, I see this. What is he, what is he watching? If you want to know what happens in a meeting, don't ask type E. He doesn't know what happened in a meeting. Because he was thinking what else to do, you know, he was, he was somewhere else. The A took such detailed minutes, he didn't know what happened in a meeting because he took too many meet, minutes, you know, everything details. The P came late, left early, too much to do. God damn meetings, I don't have time for meetings. And the I, let me tell you what happened, let me tell you who said what, why did he say it, what did he mean by that? Well, we know exactly what's going on there. I. Okay, let's continue. If you want to know more, here are my books about this subject, about styles. Okay, next go. Next one. Okay, for good decisions that make the system effective and efficient, in the short and the long run, we need a complementary team in a complementary structure. If you don't have a complementary team, if you don't have a complementary structure, you're not healthy. Thank you very much. Let's continue. That is a symbol that I believe in. Go to any church and the saints are standing like this. What the hell are you standing like this? Why are they standing like this? Look at the saints in the church. They're standing like this. What do you see? Four fingers together. Complementary team. This is a blessing. The saints are telling you, be different together in your marriage, in your company, in your country, Latvia. It applies to a country. And this is a curse. In the Middle East, when they curse you, they do this in front of your face. <clears throat> what are they telling you? Be different, not together. The secret between health and sickness is only two centimeters. Are you different together or are you different not together? In your marriage, in your company, in your country. Let's continue. You need PAI, diversity PAI, but there is going to be a conflict, guys. We are in conflict. P looks at the short run. Let's go and do it. A says, slow down. You're doing it too fast. It's not correctly done. And the P says, you're wasting time. You're holding me back. And the A says, you're going to destroy the company. You're running like crazy. Normal. There is conflict between all the four. And the conflict can do something very bad for you. You have a complementary team. You have a complementary structure. But we are fighting. Fighting all day long. Like in a marriage. 
We married somebody who is different, and now, oh my God, this difference is driving me crazy. So what do we do? We need mutual respect. What is respect? Let me define the word respect for you. It's not mine. It's Immanuel Kant, the philosopher. He says, respect is when you recognize the right, the sovereignty, indeniable right, of the other person to be different. When you say to your wife or husband, I love you the way you are, you don't have to be like me. Thanks God you're different. So you compliment me. Ooh, that's respect. To recognize the right of the other to be different. By the way, why? Why, just because you're a nice guy? Because you learn from difference. You don't learn from people that agree with you all the time. What do you think? Oh, I agree with you. Oh, but what do you do with this? Tell me what am I doing wrong, you know? Tell me what you think. Say, so don't make a mistake. Compliment me. Help me make a better decision. Because I recognize I'm not perfect. Together we are perfect. Me alone, I'm not perfect by definition. And you're not perfect by definition. But if we accept each other's difference and we learn from each other, what do you say? What do I say? What do you say? What do you say? Aha, 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 aha. Wow. What's going to happen? Synergy. We're going to make a better decision together that any one of us alone can make. We create something new together by exchange, by learning from each other. In order to have synergy, growth, two and three is not five, it's six. Something was created new in the interaction, in the exchange of information, in the exchange of judgments. What do you see? What do I see? What do you think? What do I think? You see the details, I see the big picture. Well, what do you say? Aha, uh -huh, what will happen here? See, the E is like an eagle. It's very high there. See, the big picture. But the ground, are, feet are not on the ground. The P is on the ground. Says, hey, 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 where the hell are you going? Let me tell you what's happening down here. So I see down, you see up together. What the hell are we going to do? And we exchange information and we make a new decision that none of us alone could make. But it will happen only if there is mutual respect. What does it mean respect? I recognize your right to be different. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to think like me. Many divorces happen because we marry somebody who is different and then we complain. Why you are not like me? If you were like me, I would not marry you. I married you because you're not like me. Recognize the differences, appreciate the difference, but only under one condition, when you can learn from the difference. Some people, you don't learn anything. They are different and they just waste your time. Goodbye, don't waste your time. Look for people who are different that you respect because you learn from them. But for that, there must be rules of the game. How we talk. We don't interrupt each other. We listen to each other. We don't offend each other. We try to find... Okay, there is a joke. Another joke you will remember. People don't remember my lectures, but they don't forget my jokes. So here is the next joke, please. There was this father psychologist. He had two children, two sons. One was the absolute pessimist. Life is terrible. Oh my God, I hate my life. I cannot take it anymore. Oh. And the other one was the absolute optimist. Life is wonderful. Ha, 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 all the time. So he decided to do some experiential style enrichment. He took the kid, the pessimist kid, 
put them in a room full with toys children can dream about to show him life is wonderful. There's so many toys in life. Enjoy life. Stop being so pessimistic. Enjoy life. And he took the optimist kid, put in a room with a lot of, pardon the expression, horse shit. You know, up to the ankles. You know, fecal matter of horses. To show him that life is not so wonderful. There is a lot of shit in life, you know. So get used to it. After several hours, he came back to see what's happening, if they learned their lesson. And the pessimist kid is sitting in the middle of the room, crying his heart out. Life is so miserable, so many toys, I don't know which toy to play with. Why did you put me in this terrible situation? I hate my life. By the way, realize, happiness is a choice we make. You make a choice, I'm going to be happy. Or, I made a choice, I'm going to be a victim, I'm going to always feel terrible, and I will always hate my life. You will have all the reasons, you will find the reasons to hate your life. I promise you, no, dif no difficulty. It's a choice. Happiness, love, is choice. It's not, if it happens, I will be happy. No, 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 no. I will be happy that it will happen. It's a choice. We made the choice to be miserable. So sitting in the middle of the room, oh my God, all so many toys, I cannot choose a toy, what will I do with my life? I hate my life. He goes to the optimist kid, and he's whistling and singing and shoveling horseshit around, happy. He says, why are you so happy with so much horseshit? He says, with so much horseshit, there must be a pony around. <laughs> so when you have a complimentary team and there is a conflict, don't pay attention to the horseshit. Look for the pony. What can I learn from this? Why are you telling me this? If I'm learning nothing out of it, you're wasting my time. Thank you very much. Go to somebody else. I want to be surrounded with people who disagree with me that I respect and love because they disagree with me, because they help me make better decisions. So guys, organizational health must have complementary functions, complementary structure, complementary team, working with mutual respect. No mutual respect, sick. They are fighting all the time. No complementary team, no complementary functions, sick. So far, so good. Okay. Well, <laughs> making decisions is important, but you have to implement decisions. Some people are very good in making decisions, but they're not good in implementing, like I. I made a decision to go on a diet every day. Implementation, zero. How good is my decision? Zero. The quality of decision is depending on how well you implement it. <laughs> Otherwise, without implementation, the decisions are academic. What do we need for implementation? Commonality of interest. What commonality of interest? Because you do not implement decisions alone. You need cooperation. In my case about a diet, I need the cooperation between my taste buds and my brain. My brain tells me, don't eat that cake. My taste bud says, eat, 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 I have a conflict right here. There is no commonality of interest. You need other people cooperation. If they do not have common interests, they're not going to cooperate. They're not going to cooperate, implementation is going to be difficult. Agree? Make sense? Common sense? We need commonality of interest. Of whom? Let's go and see whom. Authority. We need commonality between the people that have authority. Who has authority? And people that have power. We will define what it means. And people that have influence. We want commonality of interest of all the three. 
let's define. And they're provided usually by different parties. Those that have authority usually don't have the power. Those that have power have no authority. Influence has no authority, no power. They're different groups, usually. Look at this. What is authority? The formal, formal right to make a decision. Ah, wrong. Uh, what is correct? I need to change the word make. Not to make. It should be to take. I don't know in your language. How do you say it? Do you say decision taking or decision making? What do you say in Latvian? I can't hear you. Taking. Taking. You see, it's very interesting. French, Latin, oh, French, uh, uh, Spanish is decision taking. In English, it's decision making. What's the difference? Making is I'm making a decision. Thinking, making. Taking means that's it, the wife finished, no more discussion. Who has the right to take a decision to say enough? That's what we are going to do. Finish. Thank you very much. And what does it mean to take a decision? To say yes, continue. Yes, wrong. I was I set you up. Why or? Because if you say yes or no, it means some people have the right to say yes, but they don't have the right to say no. Very rarely. Or some people have the right to say no, but they don't have the right to say yes. It happens all the time where? In a bureaucracy. You go to somebody who says, no, we cannot do this. But who can say yes? Ooh, but you cannot get up there. And what happens? Bureaucracy, no change. In a decent methodology, authorities, the right to say yes and no. Which means, if you cannot say yes, you cannot say no. Can we do this? No. Can you say yes? No, sorry. Pass me. Transfer me to who can say yes. Only who can say yes can say no. Don't put it together. Now, look, why is it important? When you start a company, the founder of the company has authority. He says yes, he says no, no problem. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. I'm the boss. The company grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Too big. Now he delegates. But he delegates the right to say no. But he keeps the right to say yes. It splits. And that's where the bureaucracy starts. They should be together. Don't split it. Don't split it. If you want to transfer the no, teach them how to say yes. Or you're going to create a bureaucracy. You're very far away. You're the only one to say yes. They all say no, and you don't know what's happening. Your company is not growing anymore. Okay. I have authority, I don't have authority. Authority has limits. That's what it says. What is power? Very important definition, power. Power is the capability, not the right, the capability to punish or reward, but be careful. To withhold expected rewards is a punishment. I expected you to give me a salary raise. You're not giving it to me. You are de facto punishing me. You don't have to punish me. Just build an expectation and don't fulfill it. You're punishing people. You build an expectation and then you don't live with it. It happens in a marriage. You have expectation. It not, your wife does not give it to you or your husband does not give it to you. How do you feel? Like you're punished. You feel very bad because you had an expectation. Thus, I don't have to say power is a capability to punish and reward. Power is a capability to grant 
or withhold cooperation, which is expected. So who in a company has power? Who can withhold cooperation? Whom do you need? Whose cooperation do you need for implementation? And they can withhold it. They can. Who? Who? Everyone. Everyone. I will tell you mostly. Don't go. You cannot catch them all. You cannot catch all your workers, guys. I learned this, I was consulting 1970s, 50 years ago, to the United States Post Office. If the mail arrives, do you know it is a miracle? Anybody in Argentina, people take, go pick up the mail, go to the first garbage can, put all the mail in the garbage can, go home. You don't know the mail you didn't get. You cannot even complain. How do you know it? If somebody wants to sabotage, I saw it in a factory for shoes. We were, we were doing strategic planning. What kind of shoes, what kind of a price, what kind of a design, strategic planning. During the break, I went down to the shipping and receiving department. And I say, guys putting shoes together in the boxes. If he wants to fuck you up because he's upset, takes one shoe of one size, another shoe of another size, in the box, catch it. Catch it. You can destroy your company, do you know that? Avis, rent a car. We try harder. They're sitting there smoking and falling asleep. We try harder. Many people believe power is at the top. So they fight to get to the top of the company. Fight and fight and fight. When they get to the top, there is a sign. It is down there. The people have the power, guys. I don't know whether I should talk about it or not. Why is Putin having difficulties in Ukraine? because you cannot fight the people. You can fight an army, you can win generals, you cannot fight people. The same thing in Israel. They will never win against the Palestinians. You cannot fight people. Go catch two million people. Go catch two million people. You can catch an army, catch five generals, they capitulate, finish the war. People, go catch people, all the people. The power is in the people, never forget that. The people have the power in your company. The last worker down there has the power, not you. He can destroy your company. Okay, next one. Influence. Capability to commit, to com convince without using authority or power. That's influence. You're doing it because you believe in it. Not because you're scared of me, not because they have authority. You got convinced by yourself. You know, this is, I do that all the time. I don't know whether my associates do it, because it's a little bit dangerous. When I finish reorganizing the company and we have an organization chart, it's just almost finished. I said, one moment, one moment, guys. I don't like the chart. I think it's wrong. And I find something wrong with the chart. There is always something wrong. And they want to kill me. I said, Dr. Dizes, we worked hard enough on this chart. We want this chart. And please don't give us any more nonsense. We are going to do it. I said, thank you. Whose chart is it now? Not mine. It's your chart. That's called influence. Oh, my consultant told me to do it. That's not influence. You're scared. You have, you have to own it. You have to own it. That's influence. And now please realize that these three circles come together. Now look at this. This is authorized power. I have the authority to, pu to punish you. 
higher fire, give you a bonus. Here, I have power without authority. I can do it. I have not the right to do it, but I can do it. I just don't, you cannot catch me. This is authorized influence. I have authority, but you believe in my authority. Say, my boss is an authority of the subject. Knows what he's talking about. So let's go and do it. Authority, that's authority, accepted authority. This is, this is the most dangerous. Indirect power. I come to influence you. May I suggest to you, but you realize behind the smile there are big teeth. I better do it, you know. It's, it's just, just suggesting. May I suggest? Do not suggest. A vice president comes and tells you for finance. He has no authority to tell you what to do. But he says, I think you should not do that. May I suggest? May I suggest? And you say, oh, I better do it because I don't know what's going to happen if I don't do it. It's called indirect power. And then when the problem does not work, who decided? Well, he told me to do it. I did not tell him what to do it. I just suggested what to do. That's why it's the most dangerous. Nobody takes responsibility. This is called copy. When you have coalesced, coalition of authority, power, and influence. Each one of them has an interest. This is common interest. We are together. Your interest is profitability. My interest is working conditions. My interest is to make the most professional decision, you know, that it's really the right decision. Who is right? All of us together. We discuss it until we find the right decision that we all together believe in. That's called copy. When we have copy, implementation is easy. When there is no copy, oh, Disagreements, fighting, ta, pu, chu, ta. Okay? Together? Okay, let's continue. Okay, the legal right to me? Okay, never mind. Okay? So you see, you can have a single copy. Sorry. Okay. You see, this is when an individual has copy. I have the right to make a decision. I can punish you or reward you if you listen to me or you don't listen to me. And I know what I'm doing. I can convince you I'm right. I have copy. Or it can be a group copy. You see, here it is. Those with authority, usually the owners or the representatives, have common interests with labor and the technocrats. That's a team copy. Are we together? Continue. And you get it with common interest. Do we have common interest? Something in a marriage. Oof. Hundred years ago, Capi was with the man. The woman was there to listen to the man. Today, mm, it's a different world, right? It's a different world. Now we need to have team Capi, not individual Capi. Team Capi. How do we do that? We better have common interest. What is a common interest called? Family, our children. Are we doing correctly for the children? We need to have common interest. Nobody is a boss anymore. We move from individual copy to team copy in the modern world. Okay, here are the books to cover this subject. As you can see, there's a lot of studying you can do if you want to learn more. Okay, let's continue. If you have commonality of interest, 
is not so easy. You need copy. But copy means conflict. A thinks this way, P thinks this way, I think this way. We want to bring them together. How do we bring them together? How do you bring together common interest when there is no common interest? You want to build common interest. Mutual trust. We have different interests, but I trust. We will work together. I give up Neil, I give it now. Later on you give in. We, how, much, how important is it to you? We do it your way. Next time, very important to me, we do it my way. I trust that you will collaborate. Do you see that or not? If there is no trust, you cannot find common interest. Everybody works for his own interest. In order to let go of my interest and look at the common interest, I have to trust the system. I have trust the people in the system. Not just trusting you, I'm trusting the company. I'm trusting the leadership of the company. I'm trusting, I don't want to say God. Some people trust God. Enough in the company. If there is trust, I'm letting go of my, my interest beyond anybody else. Because I trust that there is a benefit. And when I trust that there is benefit, there is going to be symbiosis. I contribute, you contribute to the system, and we both benefit from the system to which we contributed. Example, look at the human body. There is mutual respect. What do you mean? The kidney does not try to be the lungs. The lungs does not try to be the eyes. The eyes does not try to be the nose. Everybody has his own role. And they respect each other's role. Who does not respect? Who has no boundaries? Cancer. Cancer has no boundaries, no respect. It goes and spreads all over the body. All of you are going to be like me. I don't accept differences. I, I make everybody else be cancerous. No respect. You see that? When you respect, you stay in your boundary and you collaborate. I do my job as a kidney. I do my job as a heart. I do my job as my eyes. I do my job as a nose. Now we have a system. And everybody contributes and the system works together. Synergy. Why? Because there is symbiosis. I'm going to benefit from my contribution and you're going to benefit from your contribution. We are all benefiting from the contribution. So I kidney contribute for a healthy system and I survive. And you contribute, you survive. We survive. There is symbiosis. Now look what I'm saying to you. A healthy organization is symbergetic. I created this word. It comes from the word symbiotic and synergetic. What does it mean? Diversity, complementary, based on mutual respect, so it's grossful, synergetic, and interdependency, we all contribute and benefit from what we contribute and we trust that the system will work. Symbiosis. That is a healthy organization. Let me start again. If there is no complementary functions for all the four functions, no complementary structure, no complementary team, no mutual respect, no commonality interest, No mutual trust, you're not healthy. I gave you six variables. I go to a company, a function is missing. Three leg horse. 
que no trama. If it misses E, in the long run, it's going to die. In the long run, not today, in the long run. If there is no I, wow, they're wasting a lot of money. They could have made so much more and be so much effective in the marketplace if they just work together. No A, they're working hard but not smart. They're wasting money along the way. No P, they're only focusing on, on the technology, ignoring the client. They're going to die soon. The clients are not going to come back. Once you understand this, you will have tools to diagnose marriage, companies, countries. I work with five, no, six prime ministers in my life. And I go look at the country and I tell you, wow. I know, I can tell you what's going on. Because you have the tools. I gave you the tools so far, six tools to diagnose. I repeat, does your company have all the functions necessary to fulfill PAI? Does it have the complementary team that all the four functions are being reflected in the leadership? Is there mutual respect? Do we learn from each other? Do we respect each other? Is there commonality of interest between the parties necessary for implementation? Some parties might not be in the company, by the way. Some parties may be outside of the company. Investors, the bank, the franchisees, I don't know, somebody, suppliers. They can screw you up. Whom do I need for implementation? Do we work with mutual trust? Do I trust my supplier? I just had a client from mine in Mexico. They lost $40 million because the supplier was the Chinese guys. Not trustworthy. Promised, did not fulfill. Promised, did not fulfill. And they, used, they assumed it would work. $40 million later, they realized, I cannot work, not trustworthy. So far, so good? Okay, let's continue. Your health is a function of PAI and copy. Complementary diversity of functions that collaborate with mutual respect. Collision of interests that cooperate with mutual trust. This is it. This is it. Okay, new subject. Any questions before I continue on the new subject? Any questions about the six variables that you should pay attention to see if your company is healthy or not? Greg, can I have a glass of water? Thank you. Any questions? Whenever there are no questions, I'm worried. Either you understood everything or nothing. I don't know which of it. Ah, here it is. Somebody said it. Loud, but louder, please. Can you stand up? Oof. Greg, Greg, I need your help. Can you tell me what he's saying? Because I don't hear it very well. What is he saying? He's speaking English, but he needs to translate. Okay. Is this better, Richak? Super. Um, in these modern times, when we have um, social media, an, assum an assumption that everyone knows who is who. And when we're having a remote first organizational structure, so people are working remotely, what tips have you got to developing the eye roll within organizations in, this, in, in these modern times? 
How do we get eye in the new world of them working from remote? Is that, is that the question? And social media, yeah. So everyone thinks they know everyone, but really they don't. Very good question. I'm glad you understood. And the Thank truth you. is, I don't know. It's a very good question. I don't know the answer. I'll tell you why. Let's talk about in depth what is I. Maybe we'll find a solution together because I don't have a solution. I've just. What is the difference between I and A? Both of them make the organization efficient. A makes it efficient in the short run. I makes it efficient in the long run. What is the difference? A is called mechanistic. What is mechanistic? Manuals, rules, policies. Just follow the rules. This is what integrates, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, and this is a system that enables efficiency. Here is how we do things. Here are the rules. Here are the policies. Here are the guidelines. Here is the process. Here is how you go. Okay? It's organized. Okay? It's all here. I is different. I is organic. I is here. Do you see my heart? It's how do you feel? I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to look for ways how to work with you, and we are going to find a solution to do it better. I saw the biggest eye in my life in India, in an ashram. I, I do meditation of that type. And on the birthday of the guru, 60,000 people come down to the ashram. No administration. People just volunteer what needs to be done, they do it. What needs to be done, do it. Everybody doing what needs to be done. Incredible. I in action. I did not see any managers telling, you know, you do this, here is the manual, here is this, you do this, you do that, you do this. None. It's all from the heart. I is from the heart, feeling. It is social norms, not rules, not, ju not judges and policemen. It is social norms. In that place, it's not really an ashram, it's a whole little village, town with thousand families. No policemen. Everybody does what is the right thing to do, taking care of the other guy. Taking care of each other all the time. Like in a family, you don't have a manual in a family. We are a family, we take care of each other. It's I. It's organic. It's not mechanistic. So the way to solve this problem is, now, okay, let's continue. What is the most integrating force which is organic? The most integrating organic force? Love. Love. I don't need a manual. I love you so much. How can I do something that you need? I feel you. You don't have to tell me what you want. I feel what you want. The baby doesn't tell you, Mama, I want this now. Doesn't talk. You feel the baby. You feel. So if, so if we can bring love to the process, it will work. I love each other. That I think is a way to, I, that's the only way I can think about it because I don't know what are the solutions. There are solutions, you know, annual get together for people that are working from distance and they get to work together for three days and celebrate and know each other and talk to each other and feel good about each other. Like we do on our convention, on Thursday we are having an I day. No meetings, nothing. We just spend together, talk to each other get to know each other well and feel good about each other and care for each other. So maybe that's what you need to do. 
You need to find ways to get them together, to celebrate together, not to work, to feel each other and to love each other. That's the only answer I have for you. Yes, you have more, your hand up again. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, please correct me. I, am I getting that right? Uh, that E uh, means entrepreneur uh, in the vitamin palette. Am I right? It's yeah? not entrepreneur. It's entrepreneurial role. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, but then we're talking about uh, leadership styles. And to be a leader as entrepre in entrepreneurial style, you should also have uh, another, another. you sh should also, also have P. So it requires more uh, to be a real entrepreneur than only E vitamin. But you know something, you're raising a very interesting question for you. You see, in the business world, you want EP. Social entrepreneur, you want EI. You want to build I. Let me tell you something very interesting. Thank you for the question. I didn't think about it until now. I created the first program in the world in 1972 in my university, master degree in management of performing arts. How to manage opera, how to manage theater, how to manage philharmonic orchestra, how to manage performing arts. And then the question is, what is the role of art in society? What is the role of art in society? EI, art is the agent of change and of integration. So what is the role of an opera manager? It's not P, it's I. And I'm creatively thinking how to bring the society together, how to bring around, it's called social entrepreneurship. It's EI. You can be EA entrepreneur, building systems. EA, I'm E the A, building A systems. Any, anybody here, systems analyst in the IT business, you're E A. EP is a business entrepreneurship. So E alone is not an entrepreneur. What are you e about? That's what makes you an entrepreneur. What's happening in many art organizations, you see, they put on the board of directors businessmen and they're all EP. They destroy the art. They make it profit-oriented. Are we making enough money from the theater? The art goes down the drain. That's what killed Broadway, by the way, the business orientation. So you have always to ask yourself, what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to do it so you can find the right code the right code. Any more? Yes, ma'am. How do you know who you are? And how do you find... <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, here is a sentence. I, I hear you, and I said, oh, because you touched a very important subject. So, so the question was, how do you know your style? Huh? Yeah, how, how, do you how do you know your style? style? How do you know who you are, right? Okay. And style of others. Yeah, one way is to take a test. Don't. Don't. Because you're fulfilling the expectation of who wrote the test. He's going to tell you, you are this. Do it for money. We do it. And at this institute, we sell this test. But it's money. I will tell you why. The most difficult job is to know yourself. We know everybody else, not ourselves. And there is a rule. It takes two to know one. If you want to know who you are, ask your husband. He will tell you, I can promise you. You need a mirror. You need a mirror, guys. You don't see yourself. You don't see yourself. So, so don't be afraid to see your mirror. 
Other people know who you are. By the way, you see, I, <laughs> I give a lecture about mismanagement styles. It takes about three hours about it. And everybody is laughing at it. Okay. Then I ask, do you know in your company any P people? People raise their hand. Do you know people in your company, A people raise their hand, E people raise their hand, I people raise their hand. Then I go to the bathroom, and the guys is there, I can hear them talking, but I don't know who I am. You know everybody else but yourself, because you cannot see yourself, guys. Already the philosopher said it, and I forgot which one it was. The most difficult job is to know yourself, know thyself. through other people. For instance, if your subordinates are all errand boys, come in, wait to talk what to do, go do it, wait for the next thing to do, wait well, to do it, you're a P. If your people working under you are bureaucrats, come on time, leave on time, and don't make any waves, you're an A. Tell me who works for you, and I will tell you who you are. Because they adapt to you. They fulfill your role. If you have people working for you, I call them paleros in Spanish. Bravo! Admire you all the time. Then go outside and say, oh my God, this is going to kill the company. Who are you? If they applaud you all the time, but they're not true. They applaud you, but it's artificial. In the, in the darkness, they're talking bad things about you. Who are they? What, what, what's your style? He. He. He likes the people that bravo all the time, but they're not true. They're not true. They're kissing your ass. So tell me who works for you, tell you who you are. I'll tell you more than this. But then I'm, I'm taking all my time. I sit sometimes with my wife at dinner with some new couple we don't know. New people that we were introduced to. And I'm watching the couple, just watching them. And I see he's a big E, she's a big A. And I tell them, do you mind if I tell you, you have children? Yes, we do. If I describe you, your firstborn child, let me describe you to you. You don't know us. I say, I know, but let me describe. If, she, if one of them is E, the other one is an A, the child should be what? What style should the child have? Hi. To survive. They're fighting all the time. <laughs> and what is the next child? P. It's going to sit the hell with you goddamn idiots. I'm going to do my own thing. It is dynamics of the system. The system calls for the roles, by the way. The system calls for the roles. Okay, can we continue? Continue. Davai. How about we take an early break now? Yes, half an hour, and then we start a new subject. First question. In your company, do you have a complementary structure Departments responsible for P, for A, for E, and for I. Or maybe people. In a small company, the founder is the E. Okay, so somebody is doing the E. Do you have people, structure, to fulfill all the four functions? Question number one. Write it down. Question number two. Do you have a complementary team? You don't need four. You can have two. One person is a PE, the other one is a AI. By the way, if you read my book, there are good combinations and bad combinations. A bad combination, not bad, not as good. AE with a PI, Oof, it's difficult. But PE and AI, okay. So do you have a complementary team? Question number three. Do you have a culture of mutual respect? Write it down. Next one. Is there common interest between all those that are necessary 
to implement your strategy. You have a strategy, you have a vision, you, you know where you want to go. Do all the, those that you need to implement your vision, is there a common interest? Or each one has his own interest? Next one. How much trust is between all those that you need for implementation? Ask these questions. If the answer is no, can you do it by yourself? Fix it by yourself. If you can fix it by yourself, a bravo. If you cannot fix it by yourself, Greg. I'm not doing a commercial, I'm not selling. I'm just telling you, know your limitations. When you feel that you cannot do it, ask for help. Not Greg, McKinsey, I don't care. Get help. Okay? All right, next thing. Organic systems, people, trees, animals, have a life cycle. They are born, they grow, they age, and they die. Same thing for organizations. Organizations are also organic entities. They are alive. Like a human being is alive, like a tree is alive. They have a life cycle. Organizations are born, grow, age, and some of them die. You don't have to die. We have right now a client in Mexico, third generation, running perfect, can run another three generations. No problem. You don't have to die. By the way, you don't have to die either. But that's a different lecture. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't have to die. We die physically, but you don't have to die. You can be alive for a long time. Not physically, differently. Companies also. Business dies, the company does not die. They change from this business to that business, from this business to that business. You don't have to die when the business dies. You just change the business. Clear? All right, let's study the life cycle. PAEI, these four functions, develop in a predictable sequence in a company. The company is born in prime. Nobody is born, you know, full. There is a sequence by which we grow and develop the roles. First, you have the E. Then, the P. And the E goes down. Why is that? Because energy... I hear myself, there is an echo. Hello? Computer guys. There is an echo. There is a... Energy is fixed. So first you put your energy into P, uh, E, then you put into P. Then you put the energy into how to put the two together. And now comes the problem. That's your problem, what's called the family trap or the founder's trap. How do I get out of the family trap? Because this is an individual. Do you see PE, individual doing it? The founder running the business. Oops, now what happens? A has to grow. E goes down, and that's where the fight is. The founder doesn't want to let go. I will, I will get into the details. And then you need AE, and then PAI. This is a sequence how companies grow. There is a better way to grow. This is a normal way to grow. Start with I. Do we share values? Do we share the vision together? Yes. Okay. Let's articulate that vision. 
Let's get organized. Now let's go and do it. Do you see the sequence? If you start with I, the sequence to get to the best is faster. I will go into more details later. And here is how companies die. The first thing that dies is E. We lose, we don't dream anymore. We become old, like an old person, you know. By the way, any of you that likes to get my weekly blog, I write every week a blog for the last 10 years. Please give me your card, I'll put you on my mailing list. Every week I write something. So I wrote about it, how to stay young as a human being. Never stop dreaming. Continue planting trees, although you might not benefit from the fruit. You stay young, always have a dream. Always look for something, for a reason to get up in the morning. You get old when you have no reason to get up in the morning. E, E keeps you young. When you lose your E, you're starting to age. Then you lose your P. You're not dreaming anymore. You're getting more sluggish. And then the E becomes zero. Then the P becomes zero. And here it is, full bureaucracy. The only thing left is A. And then you die. One way to lose, to age, is to lose E. There's another way to, die, to age, to lose I, the second, the second line. First you lose I. We don't work together anymore, we are fighting. Copy is going down. Because of that, there is no energy to be entrepreneurial. You have no energy. And because of that, the P goes down. When you stop dreaming about the future, Eventually, the future becomes the present. P goes down. E and I are zero. P is zero. Bureaucracy, death. Let's go into details now. Ready? As the organization struggles to develop the PAI role, nobody, no organization is born big PAI. Like a human being is not born mature. All the elements are together and then they slowly develop at a time, one at a time. If it struggles to develop a role, it's normal problems, normal problems of developing the role. If it has difficulty developing the role, tries it doesn't work, try it doesn't work, tries it doesn't work. It's abnormal. If abnormal problems are not solved over time, eventually they become critical. They will kill your company. So look at the roles. What's missing? Are you developing it? Are you not developing it? How difficult it is to develop it? Let's look at this. Let's start. First stage in the life cycle is called courtship. The company does not exist yet. It's a dream. How many of you founded a company? How many of you are founders? Okay, just tell me later on whether this is true for Latvia as well, okay? Or is it not? Maybe not. At this stage, what's the most important thing? E, you develop the E, you have a dream. You have a dream, you're all excited with a dream. What are the characteristics? It's an idea. You're dreaming. You're all excited. A lot of big talk, half-baked ideas, but you're excited. You're flying high, can't sleep at night, dreaming. And you're selling the idea to other people. Telling people, hey, you know, I have a great idea, it is what we can do, and we really believe in it. By the way, whom are you selling this? Whom are you trying to convince? Really? Yourself. Huh? Yourself. I'll tell you what you're doing. You're building your commitment. You're building a commitment. Selling the idea. People say, good idea. Oh, I'm more committed. I'm more committed. You're building your commitment. Why this is important? Here is healthy and unhealthy organization. <laughs> 
the risk you're going to take when you start the company, your commitment is to be equal to the risk. I want to build a big company, but I'm looking for somebody to do it. I want to get married, I'm looking for somebody to marry for me. You have to, you have to get married. You have to be committed. And when I look at the risk, I say, you know what? Your commitment is to be very high here. You are going to invest 10 years of your life, day and night, no sleep, weekends. This is a big commitment. Are you ready? Example. To start a revolution where the risk is very high, how big should be the commitment? Very high. How high? I'm ready to die. When I was in, <laughs> when Khomeini came to power in, in Iran, the Iranians in Beverly Hills, who escaped from Iran, were marching up and down, you know, Wilshire Boulevard, down with Khomeini, motherhood, and I asked one guy, are you ready to go back and to fight and to die? He says, no, 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 I have a barbecue this afternoon. <laughs> How big is going to be the revolution? There is no commitment. How committed are you, my friend? Same thing is true for a marriage. I want to get married, but I don't like to be committed. I still like to be free. You're not committed. Commitment is to equal risk. If not, the company is going to die. Ready? Okay. The focus is only on want. I want it, I want it, I want it. But it isn't, but I want it anyway. Healthy courtship. Want, 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 want. There is a difference between want, should, and is. There are three different things. I call them perceptions of reality. Is is what's going on. Right now, what is going on? We are in a workshop with Dr. Adizis. Does anybody have any doubt what is going on? You don't have doubts, right? But you know what is going on. But I would not be surprised while you are here, you might say, what I really want to do is go on vacation. I am sick and tired of all this work. I want to go on vacation, but I am in a seminar. But what I should do is go to the office and work. You see the difference? That's why we are very time, often we are frustrated. What I do is not what I want to do, and what I want to do I should not do. What the hell am I going to do? In a courtship, the focus is on want. But you should not do it. I don't care. I want to do it. But it isn't. I'm going to make it happen. It's driven by want. But careful. At the background should be what? Should and is. Should you want it? How big is the risk? How big is the cost? I know the value. What is the cost? So a healthy courtship is realistic dreaming. Just dreaming, you will fail. What is realistic dreaming? You have a dream, then you do a business plan. Now you get into what you should do. Where is the supply going to come? Where is the money going to come? Where are the people going to come? Where are the clients? Where are the distribution? Go through all the should details. What I'm claiming is, it's okay to dream as long as you wake up in the morning. If you never dream, you're not going to start a company. If you only dream, you're going to have a nightmare. You need to dream and to wake up in the morning. You go from want to should and then make it is. The sequence is want, should, is. Are we together? Yes? Okay, good. What's abnormal? No reality testing, no checking the is. <laughs> Nobody checked that there is supply. Nobody checked, you know, the difficulties of Labor force, there is no labor force. What the hell are you going to do? But I'm dreaming to do something. Oh, 
Mă rog, de doit. Nu cash flow management. Big problem. Because the an infant organization is like a baby. Every three, four hours, milk. Every three, four hours, milk. And sometimes you get upset. I gave you milk three hours ago. I gave milk. I'm a baby. I'm growing. Same thing with the company. Again cash flow, again cash flow. I need cash flow, more money, why? Accounts receivable, working capital. <laughs> you need to do cash flow analysis. I claim 13 weeks. Every week, project the next 12 weeks. Every week, project the next 12 weeks. Rolling projection, not an annual one. Annual one is too many changes. Weekly, weekly. Where is the cash going to come from? Don't be like a baby, no milk. And now what the hell is happening? You die. <sighs> Another problem. Usually in high-tech companies, great technologies, great ideas. Wow, market wants it, technology. But it does not understand business. Does not understand business. And they usually fail. They usually fail. Oh, it's a great idea, great technology, everything. But you know, you're not a businessman. What's the difference between businessmen, I will tell you. Uh, guys, is this working? How do I do this? Okay, let me try. An artist looks only at the value, not at the cost. That's why you usually die poor. Only look at the value. Cost. Bureaucrats only look at the cost, not at the value. How much does it cost? But the value is not important. How much does it cost? A businessman looks at cost value. That's a businessman. Many technologists are artists. Technology, innovations, make it special, make it different. Wow, I'm excited. But they're not businessmen. They don't look at the cost. They only look at the value. Will not succeed. And a bureaucrat will not succeed. Because they always think about why not? Why not? Why not? The cost, why not? A businessman says, why yes, why not? It makes sense, let's do it, do it. That's why it's most desirable when you have a very technologist innovator, you must have a partner with a businessman. If you don't have a partner businessman, I would not invest. I want to know, is there a complementary team? And only a businessman without technology uh, is not innovative enough. I want both. So far, so good. Another abnormal, as a dream, you tell him, but it, there are problems, don't tell me. They don't want to hear about problems. I'm in love, don't tell me that I'm wrong. You're living in a dreamland, my friend. You are dreaming, but you're listening. So I call it realistic dreaming. Otherwise, you're ignoring reality. And the critical problems, no complementary team, only technology, only marketing guys, only ideas, only dreaming. And here's another problem, short-term financing for long-term investment. You run out of money. You need to have long-term financing for long-term investment, for long-term development. Otherwise, you're running out of money all the time, running out of money all the time. You do not analyze the situation very well, which is changing all the time. You have to watch it all the time, like a baby. That's why you don't sleep at night. They cry all the time. <laughs> I was talking somewhere <laughs> in the conference, and I was saying, in this company, you know, they sleep like a baby. And somebody said, like venture capital. I said, why like venture capital? 
because we sleep two hours like a baby and cry the rest of the night, you know, so that's what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you want to be, did you check what's going on here? The conflict of interest. You brought the wrong investors. You have a long-term idea, and you brought investors with a short-term orientation. They want the profits early, sooner. They're going to kill you before you know it. Do you have the right investors? Do you have the right conflict of interest? Do you have the right investors? The smart investors that share my values. Otherwise, it, they will kill your company. They will kill the company. 95% of startups die. 95% die. All right, the company is born. When is the company born? Until now, it was all dreaming. The company is born not when you register the company with a lawyer. When you take the risk. When you say, it is my money. I quit my job. I'm starting the company. Tell me the amount of risk you take, and I will tell you the size of the baby born. Which for which you need, what size of commitment you need. So the company is born when the risk is born. And now what happens when the risk is born? No more time to dream. Now is the time to what? To do. Now, my friend, get to work. Now we need to sell, we have to cash flow, we have to watch the product, the quality of the product, the supply, the inventory. Oh my God. Like a baby, you don't sleep at night. You are working 24 hours 7. You know what? One of my clients told me the story that his wife told him when he was going to start a company, his wife looked at him and says, why are you starting a company? Starting a company is going to sleep young and waking up old. Where did all my time go? Building the fucking company, that's where it went. You have no time for nothing, guys. No time for children, no time for... Many get divorced. They get divorced, why? The spouse cannot take it anymore, you're not there. And by the way, they get divorced, and whom do they marry? They divorce their wife, whom do they marry? The accountant or the secretary? You know why? She is there all the time. She is there all the time. She's the real mother of the new baby. She's a new baby and she's the mother of the new baby. P goes up, E goes down, no time to dream. Now, if you continue dreaming in infancy, is it healthy or not healthy? Healthy? What does it mean continue dreaming? New idea, and a new idea, and a new idea, and a new idea. Is it good? No. Now is the time, no more new ideas. Focus. Make this idea work. Otherwise, <laughs> like teenagers try to get a nice woman, they go to a bar. From one bar to the other, not this one, not this one, this one, this one, they go home with nobody. <laughs> they couldn't make a choice. You have to focus. I help Domino Pizza. Do you have Domino Pizza in Latvia? No Domino Pizza here? Yes, oh, you do? I help them. I help them go from 150 million to 4 billion. And here the principal, he was very creative, Tom Moynihan, the CEO, very, very creative. I learned this from him. Anytime a new idea, put on a piece of paper in a file. Do nothing about it. Finish one thing. You finished, open the files, choose the next thing. Because if you spread yourself, you end up with nothing. You have to stop dreaming. Now is the time to do not to dream.
See? When risk is take, taken, P is not important because we have risk. We have to take care of it. We need money. We need to sell. Time to act, not to dream. You cannot do both because energy is fixed. Okay? Normal problems. Do, 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 do. Normal. I have no time to, to think. I have no time to talk. We have to do. We have work to do. We have crisis. Crisis management. Infant organization is crisis. Every morning a different crisis. Inventory crisis, product crisis, sales crisis, client crisis, crisis every morning. You're in a crisis mode all the time. Normal, welcome to the club. The baby is crying all the time. Welcome, it's a baby. You're building the P. You're building the P. Short of cash, no structure, by the way. In an input organization, the job description is one word. Everything. Whatever needs to be done. You know, whatever needs to be done. <laughs> when I started at Business Institute, I was teaching at Stanford University, visiting professor, and one of my students says, I want to work for you, Dr. Dizes. I want to work for you, I want to learn. I said, fine. And we started in my kitchen. He says, Dr. Dizes, what is my career ladder? Because I taught him, you know, you should have a career ladder. Where do you stop? Where do you go? What do you do next? What do you do? And I looked at him, we are startup, you know, $5,000 in the bank. He and me alone in the kitchen. Career leather. So I told him, Henrik, the career leather is underground. You're on the top of the leather. Start pumping. <laughs> Start pumping. Everything, whatever needs to be done, my friend. You're the salesman, you're the file clerk, you're the secretary, you're everything. It's a startup. So there is no structure. Whatever needs to be done. Whatever needs to be done, do it. If you build structure, what is this? And flexible rules. Whatever needs to be done, whatever needs to be done. What is this? No A. Normal. It's a baby. You want A for a baby? <sighs> no. It's normal. The A is low, which means you'll have a lot of crisis. Normal. Normal. What does the normal mean? You will grow out of it. Don't get preoccupied. Don't get panicky. You will grow out of it. It's normal. That's why grandparents tell, you tell the parents of the baby, let the baby grow, you know. Don't be so panicky. Why? Because they've been there. They already know. <laughs> it's a baby. It's a child. It's a baby. Oh, autocratic leadership. My way and no way. Do what I tell you. Many people believe it's not normal. You're not participative enough. You're not open enough. Wrong. It's normal to have dictatorial management in an infant organization. Like, if you have a baby, you're not going to have participative kibbutz how to raise a baby. It's my baby, shut up, I do what I think is right. That's it, no more discussion. True or not true? You know why it's normal? Because the founder does not know what he's doing. He's trying. So if many people start telling him what to do, he gets lost. I'm trying things, so just do it my way until I find out what works. That's why political science now. Many developing countries, I claim it's normal that they're dictatorial. Then the Americans come and say, no, no, no. You should be democracy. And what happens in that country? Anarchy galore. They destroy the country, they destroy Iraq. Democracy does not work everywhere. You have to be in prime to have democracy. Infant democracy. Try to do democracy with a baby. Well, try. You need copy. You need copy. And you have many problems. Welcome to the club. Infant is trying to build it. You're trying to find out what to do. Okay. But watch it.
Want is still bigger than is, but the is is to come into the gang. That's why it's very dangerous if you just only want, abnormal. Only P, 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 P. Eventually, you, have to, you will see when the system stabilizes, you have repetitive clients, repetitive sales, cash flow is predictable, inventory is predictable. Ah, I can breathe. E gets back. The E has to come back. If the E does not come back, your P, 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 you remain small and you die. Are you with me? That's all abnormal. Oof, no financial controls. No cash flow management. Kills you. No quality control. Why? No A. No A. Be careful. Minimum A necessary. Minimum. Or are you going to deliver unfinished products? And what's going to happen? It comes back. You lose the credibility, you lose the brand, you lose the market, you're dead. You need to a minimum, minimum. Critical problems, no cash, product is not, yes sir. What is exclusive leadership? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where? Oh, no, no, no. On the abnormal problem. Okay, let me see. Oh, abnormal, you said. No, no, next one. Autocratic? Abnormal. Where are you? Next, 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 slide. next one. Yes, yes. Okay. Only P in the company. No A, no E, no I, nothing. Just do, 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 do. No thinking about systems, no thinking about order, no thinking about systematization. No A, zero A. Only P, do, 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 okay? No new ideas, no improvements, no adapting to the client needs. Only do, 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 do. You're dead, okay? Competition kills you while you have no E. You're not looking what's going on around there, you know. You're working P, 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 you don't see. You don't see. Ah, here is another one that can kill you. A of the government. Government, all kind of rules for starting a company. Very, very demanding. You, like in some Scandinavian countries, you must have the workers on your board of directors and you have a representative of the, of the people from their board of directors. You did not start the company, you already have, you know, you know. Wolves, if you touch the little baby wolf with your hand, the mother will kill the baby. Why? Because it does not smell of her anymore. It smells of somebody else. I call it external hand. Same thing with the company. I'm a founder, I started the company. So much intervention of the government, at a certain point, it's not my company anymore. It's the government company. I have to live with the government all the time. The hell with it, I don't want to have a company. Because it's not my company anymore. Too much interference from the outside. External hand is interfering. So you have to be very careful in many countries they have entrepreneurial uh, drive, I don't know what to call it. They don't have enough generation of new companies. Why? Because they're being suffocated by government regulations. Too much, and what is government regulation? A, too much A kills the P. Too much A kills the E. Okay? Hello? Burn out. I work, 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 work. Infancy has to be not too long. If it is too long, 
I, 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 you know something, I just cannot do it anymore. <laughs> Burn out. And the commitment is too small, smaller than the risk. This is all critical problems that will kill the company. Next stage, GoGo. What is GoGo? Company transits from infancy to GoGo when? Cash flow is predictable and positive. Clients are repetitive. Quality control, finally under control. What is the common denominator? Finally, I can think. And now what happens? The E comes again. The e. wow. What we did with shoes, we can do with real estate. And what we did in real estate, we can do with electronics. And what we did with electronics, we can, in, in, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, import uh, flour. What the hell are you doing? Well, what we did in this, we can do with that. We can do with this, we can do with that. Where is the YPO here? We have a YPO in the audience. You are here. Oh, you are here. I work with YPO a lot, 26 universities. And it's known when a YPO comes back from a university, everybody says, oh my God, here he comes. New ideas. Before you know it, you see 300 new ideas that everybody says, oh my God, now what are we going to do? Because it's entrepreneurial, you see. He started the company, he succeeded. He succeeded. The company now is working, he's selling, we are growing. Oh my God. Now he develops arrogancy. What we did with this product, I can do with this product, with this product, and with this product, like this product, you see? So what are the characteristics of Gogo company? Overconfidence. Pardon me, I little get vulgar with my language, but that's the language of the street. It's called the piss goes into his head. He believes he can walk in the rain and not get wet. I succeeded. When I started the company, you all told me it cannot be done. I've proven you all wrong, so fuck off. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. He starts building an empire. They get arrogant. Some arrogancy is normal. What is abnormal when the arrogance is too much? He does not listen to anybody. I know it all. I succeeded. Nobody can tell me nothing, you fuckers. You know, who the hell are you? Normal. Everything is a priority. Why? Well, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this, we can do that. Come on, guys, we can do everything. Go, go. How does it look like? Like a two-year-old baby. They can jump from the sofa head on, running all over the place and putting things into their mouth, right? What do you have to do with a two-year-old baby? No, 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 no. Same thing with a go-go company. Our job is to tell them, no, 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 no. Because they're all over the fucking place. In a go-go company, say, show me your organization chart. We start, we finish. Is it all? Ah, ah, we forgot. We also invested in, in, in case I, I don't know where. Okay, put another one. Ah, ah, we also have this. Ah, 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 it's like watching a cat giving birth. Another baby and another baby. How many babies does this cat, cat have? That's a go-go company. They're all over the fucking place. Go-go. Many focuses. And the priorities change frequently. <laughs> In a Google company, you say, everybody write down the priorities of the company. Accumulate. How many priorities do you think they have? 120. When you have too many priorities, how many priorities do you have? None. Let me tell you how you set up priorities. Not by deciding what to do. You set the priorities by deciding what not to do. What is left is a priority. I then write down everything you have to do. Now, what are you not going to do?
back burner. What is left is priority. Too many priorities at the Google company because they're all excited. The founder is excited. Abnormal. What was normal in infancy, I'm the boss. Do what I tell you. <coughs> Abnormal in Gogo. Because he's running wild. He's all over the place. Doesn't listen to anybody. I succeeded. I did it. Who are you going to tell me what to do? And he's going to make a mistake. It's only a question when. Because type E's like to push the envelope, try to see what the limits are. All the time, they're like little children. Look at little children. They push you all the time, try to see what the limits are. When are you going to say no? They, they push you in limits. Same thing with this guy, E, is pushing the limits. Now, they know where the limits are only when you cross the limit. You don't know the limits until you cross the limit. Ah, 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 this is the limit. Like with little children, you have to give them limits because they're going to test you, test you, test you, and tell them this is the limit. Ah, now I know where the limit is. So the same thing in a Google company, you see. I'm the boss who nobody tells me what to do. Nobody sets the limits. And what's going to happen? Eventually, the Google company, eventually, is going to be in trouble. I'm sharing with you 50 years of experience, over 50 countries I worked in. I personally worked at this Institute. Where is Greg? Greg, where are you? Okay, so because I want you to be also sharing with the stage. We have this experience all over the world. A Google company, we tell them, you're going to get into trouble. I don't know when, but you will be in trouble. Because, listen to me carefully. Building a company is like building a high-rise, multiple stories building. When you started, it was a small company. So you had foundations for two floors. Now the business is good and you feel like you're, wow, I built it, I succeeded. Build the third floor and the fourth floor and the fifth floor and the sixth floor and the seventh floor. What's going to happen? Foundations of two floors. It's, it's going to collapse. A Google -go company will get into trouble. Predictable, I don't know when. But I know it will get into trouble. Either there will be a big problem with quality control. Or there's going to be a big problem. Wrong product in the wrong market. Oh my God, why did we start that business? Why did we go into that market? We did not study it. But arrogancy, because arrog arrogancy always produces problems. Because you're arrogant, you're dreaming, you don't look at reality. Google company will get into trouble, eventually. Unless you do what I'm telling you to do now. What do you need to develop in order not to get into trouble? Which, which role needs to be developed now? A. Hey. They don't have A. So it's good to build the Gogo, -go, but then sooner bring the A or you'll be in trouble. See? And A is the challenge as the founder. Says, wait a moment, we don't have enough money. Where are we going? What are we doing? A strong CFO. A strong, strong, strong CFO. That's what you need. We're a consultant. Arrogancy, abnormal. The E role monopolized. Hmm. See, abnormal because now only one E. Who is the E? The founder. And what happens if the founder dies? The E dies. Who dies now? The company dies. The moment E dies, eventually the company dies. Because the E is monopolized, single. You should be, you should be institutionalize it into the company if you want to survive. 
Und der ist Arsonist. Do this, do this. Let me tell you one of the problems with this arsonist. <coughs> it happens in the Google company. I have the client right now with this, this, this situation. It's called the seagull syndrome. If you have a boat, you don't like seagulls. It's a bird that comes, craps on your boat, and it leaves, right? Get away from my boat, you know, don't crap on my boat. The founder becomes a seagull in the go-go. Successful, money is coming, market is working, pa, po, pee, pee. He goes on vacation or he goes to YPO conference. Okay? When he comes, everything is wrong, ta, 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 goes away on vacation. Comes from vacation, ta, 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 goes on vacation. Everybody says, oh my God, here he comes, now what? What's now, what's now, now? what do we do with him now? What do we do now? Oh, now he's going to leave, now he's coming, he's leaving. The company is in the, don't know what's next to going to happen. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go, no fear, everything looks interesting. Let's try this, let's try that. They get into trouble very easily. And the wrong product, wrong partnership, wrong business, because they're arrogant. They're not watching. They're building a high rise on a single home foundation. Undertaking way over ambitious, pushing the envelope. Oh, and if they go public, I don't know about your country, uh, in developing countries, it's not a big problem because they don't pay attention to this. But in America, some go to jail because it goes public, gets money from the public, it's a public company, from the stock exchange, but it continues to behave like it's a private company. He looks at the investors as, uh, they just gave me a loan. So now he does a, what happened. Big, big birthday party for a million dollars, you know, spends his money on his boat. He's using company money for his personal needs, like he did when he was in a go-go. But now it's a public company. He's using public money. They get sued and got put in, in prison very often. Very often. Because they forget who is who. Who owns what? Am I public or not? Okay. Okay. Treating investors like, not as owners. As people just getting a loan, that's how I treat them, as an outsiders. Critical. Aha. Uh -huh. Monopolized E. Monopolized copy. Everything is the founder. Nobody dares to move. One person show. Because when he dies, what happens? The company dies. No succession. They are the biggest asset and the biggest liability. Why biggest asset? Because they're, they're very bright. They're not stupid. They're very, very capable people. I mean, they didn't build the company because they're stupid. Because they're very, very intelligent, very capable, very fast, very good. So they're the biggest asset, they know the connections, the banking, investors, you know, relationships. But it's all monopolized. That's why it's a liability. What happens if they die? Or if something happens to them? Eventually, the Google company will get into trouble. Eventually there will be something that will going to trigger moving to the next stage of the life cycle. And usually it's a crisis. The franchisees are suing you, the licensees are suing you, the government is suing you for something, uh, you have a quality control problem, you have a product doesn't work, something ran out of cash, something happened which is a crisis. What do we need? See, something happens. Something happens. And all of this happens 
because there is no A. The A is pushing, hello, hello. Now need, we need order. That's the founder says, I cannot manage. I, 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 I know how to build a company, I don't know how to manage a company. That's a typical expression. I know how to build a company, but I don't know how to manage a company. I don't know how to do A, A bothers me, you know. All these details is not for me. I'm the big ideas guy. The details, oh. They need, perhaps, the company needs more A. But be very careful, very, very, very careful. When A goes up, I goes down. Now we rely on rules, not on relationships, on rules, on order, on policies, on systems. It kills the eye. And if it kills the eye, it's going to be very difficult for the company. Why? Because when you build A, what will go down? You remember, we had PE in, 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 in Google, right? Yeah. PE, right? Are you with me? Now, A needs to go up. Which of the two roles has to go down? P or E? I can't hear you. E. E. You're absolutely right. But who is the E? The founder is going to go down? Fuck you. <laughs> now we have a conflict, my dear friends. Welcome to the club. He says, I need A. And he hires chief financial officer. And the chief financial officer says, we are making a mistake. You are spending money in the wrong direction. I don't know what are we doing. And now do they like each other? No, oh, my friend, now conflicts. That's what happened to Apple computer when Steve Jobs was going wild. Big E, he was driving the company crazy. So he hired the big A from Pepsi Cola to be the managing director. And what happened the A, that A did? He said, Jobs, you are my biggest liability. You are my enemy. He went to the board of directors told them the guy is driving the company crazy, and what did the board of directors do? Kicked him out. And the moment they kicked the E out, what happened to Apple? Down. Do you see this? It's so, once you have the tools, guys, I'm giving you tools that will enable you to read the newspapers better. Trust me. You say, oh, I see what's happening. You can predict it. I look at countries and I say, oh, this country is in trouble. I, can, I see the roles. I see copy. So I'm giving you tools to analyze everything, marriage, country, companies, anything. So the problem is, the problem is A goes up. E should go down, but E, if it's E personalized, E refuses to go down. Now what the hell do we do? Big fight. And if there is no I, what's going to happen? Either the E fires the A, I hired the wrong guy, fire, next A, no good, fire, next A. That's what happens to Starbucks. Here the sequence of A's, managing directors, fire, fire. Finally said, no more, I will come back in. He gets back in. Because he refuses to let go. So either the A, the E fires the A, is a sequence of A's, or the A, if the E is not in control of the company anymore, because they brought too many investors. Now, what does the A do? Talk to the board, and what do they do? Kick the E out. In both cases, the company is in trouble. What should happen? E should go down temporarily. The founder should say, I'm hiring somebody to run the company for me. But how do you do it? It's a very complicated maneuver. Please, listen to me all. It is a complicated maneuver. Because you don't decrease A, 
and decrease E just by saying so. You have to restructure the company. To build A, you have to restructure the company. Because the company in Gogo is structured around the, go around the founder. What he likes, how he likes it. It's around people. Oh, I like you, do this. I like you, you do this. It is <laughs> Jewish joke. A guy goes to buy himself a suit, a custom-made suit. They have to measure, you know, custom-made suit. And in the first measurement, he sees that the sleeve is too long. So he says to the tailor, the sleeve is too long. The tailor says, no problem, do like this, it will be perfect. What about this? Do like this, it will be perfect. What about my shoulder? It will be perfect. So the guy walks down the street. Two women look at him and one says to the other, poor guy. And the other one says, yes, but the suit fits him. <laughs> Same thing in the organization. The organization chart is like this, around the founder's priorities and how he likes it. Now a new guy comes in to manage it. <laughs> Try to manage it. <laughs> it is organized for the founder. You cannot get into this suit. So the first thing you have to do to make the transition is you have to reorganize a company. Don't bring an A yet. Don't bring an A prematurely. It cannot, it cannot fit into your shoes. You have to restructure the company. And here is the rule. A company should be organized by a genius so any idiot can run it. And not by an idiot, it takes a genius to run it. It should be an organization chart, normal person can run. This a normal person cannot run. The company is not structured right. So the sequence should be in Gogo, in, to go to the next stage of adolescence. To reduce the E, redefine, redefine. What business are we in? The company has to be reborn, because by that stage, what you used to do, what you're doing, might not be fit anymore. Redefine. What is the mission? Not you, the management team. They have to own now the vision, not you as a founder. Now you have to build the teamwork. You have to make the transition from entrepreneurship to professional management. Now we have to professionalize the organization. It's not you anymore. Up to this stage, PE, personalized. The moment you bring A, you're institutionalizing management. Institutionalization, order, systems, priorities, policies. Who is going to do it? The people, they have to have a vision. Not your vision anymore, our vision. Now it has to be shared. They have to have a vision. You have to transfer your vision to them. We have a vision now. So you're becoming more indispensable. They have the vision, the right organization structure. Now I bring it to somebody to manage it. Easy. Do you see what happened? Now it's easy. But to bring somebody into your mess, manage the mess for me. And he tries to do it, and the founder says, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. Fire, next guy, fire. You're bringing it to a mess, you cannot manage it, for the sake. You see, what you need to do is, the usual mistake they do it, by the way, I made a mistake in my book. I have to rewrite the book. In my book, if you look at it, I said it should go. A goes up, P goes down. Wrong. I was wrong. I still have to rewrite the book. Not the P goes down. E goes down. So the A can work. And then E goes up. Sorry. E goes up. Eventually. Okay, but it's not an individual E, it's a team E, institutionalized E, managerial team E, 
strategic planning of the team, not of the individual. You see, this is a very difficult stage. Many of you are there, I know, because I know that this is uh, many companies here at that stage of the life cycle. It's not an easy transition. You have to do the right thing in the right sequence. Let me give you the sequence again. Define your mission as a team. Where are we going? Who are we? Next. What is the right organization structure? So it's not organized around people. It's organized around functions. Ignore the people. Bring the people to the structure, not the structure to the people. Then bring somebody to start managing it for you. And then you become chairman of the board. And somebody is running it, but is running something which is structured with the vision, with the structure, so, so I can breathe. I'm not losing control. You see, organization is reborn. The organization is reborn now, independent. Same thing in adolescence. When the children are adolescents, they're separating themselves from the parents. Do you realize that? They want to be independent. That's why they're difficult. There is a sequence. Babies, children, monsters. When they're teenagers, they're called monsters because they're uncontrollable, you know. They want to separate. Now they want to be independent, you know. Same thing. Same thing. They're getting separated. And by the way, what happens when they get separated? Do teenagers love their parents? Do teenagers love their parents? No, no way. Same thing in a company. When they get into the adolescent stage of the life cycle, the people don't like the founder anymore. The founder is the problem. He is driving the company crazy. And does the found, do you like your children when they are teenagers? No. no. By the way, do you know what grandchildren are? Grandchildren are the reward you get for not killing your children, you know? <laughs> When they're teenagers, you want to kill them, no? Same thing with the founder. Say, so bastards, I built the company. I gave them work. I gave them future. And they're giving me all the hard times, son of a bitches. Same, ten, the same thing, guys. Same dynamics. Hear me well. Same dynamics. It could be avoided. I'm telling you the sequence. How to avoid it. Again, I'm not doing sales. Go McKinsey, I want to do what is right. Get help to make the transition. Somebody to lead you for to define your mission. So together, we have a joint mission. Then we jointly design the structure. And structure has three components. It's not the organization chart. Organization chart is one third of an organization structure. It only tells you who is responsible for what and to whom. Responsibility. Does not tell you who has authority. And you have to build the authority structure to, to match the responsibility structure. Then the reward structure, they have to be aligned. Authority, responsibility has to be aligned with authority, aligned with rewards. That's a structure, three components. Now, when I have a right structure and a right vision, now we can make the transition. Before that, be a lot of fighting. And when there's a lot of fighting, what happens? See, copy is in trouble. Fighting becomes the found. It's not between the founder and the company. You remember we started the complementary team? You remember? This is a time where the partners split. This is the time. Because the A partner says the E partner is killing the company. This gogo -go is killing the company. We created a monster. It's uncontrollably, and the A is getting worried. And he's starting to fight the E. And the E says about the A, I built this fucking company. And he's telling me I'm doing it wrong, constantly digging me, constantly bothering me, constantly controlling me, the hell with him. And what happens, my friends? What happens? 
What's going on here? What's going on here? It's conflict of style, conflict of culture. That's why you have the Z. The copy is in trouble. And come on. Divorce. This is the time when the partners split. Predictable. By the way, who buys whom? Usually. The A buys the E or the E buys the A? What do you think? Who buys whom? The A buys the E. The E says, I've had it, I have other ideas, I can start another business, fuck off. And the A says, how much? Get the fuck out of here. Predictable. Or something else can happen. You see, there's a problem from personalized copy to institutional copy. That's why it's a difficulty. That's why the difficulty here, the fighting of copy and the fighting of styles. That's why the divorce. There's a fight here, it's a copy fight. When, <laughs> this client of mine told me, Dr. Adizes, do you know when do you stop making love to a gorilla? I said, I don't know. When the gorilla wants, not when you want. <laughs> when you were born, there was a little, a little monkey there, you know, we were playing with it, it was fun. That fucking monkey became a big gorilla now. Now I don't know who is controlling who now anymore. Now the company is controlling me now. I'm now in time. How do you control this big thing? Is Tesla managing Elon Musk or is Elon Musk being managed by Tesla? Big conflict there. Example. And there is a fight. They don't, the fighting, as I told you, don't like the leader, challenging the leaders, EA conflict, the eye goes down, divorce. Company is in very big trouble at that stage. That's why the divorce. Or, 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 the founder says, if it's not partnership, it's not a partnership, it's still in control. I cannot make the transition. I'm going to run it as long as I can. Call founder's trap. It didn't make the transition. I'm running it. My company, I do the best I can, the hell with you guys. And when I die, I die. I don't care. My company. See what happened here? It did not transition. Now it becomes PE. No A. I run the show. Company is small. It remains small. I run my company, that's it. Finish. By the way, it does not have to be founder trap. It's also called family trap. How many generations does it take before the company dies? On average, how many? How many? Three, all over the world. Very interesting, all over the world. In Mexico they say, father businessman, Son playboy, grandson beggar. In China they say, from peasant shoes to peasant shoes in three generations. In America they say, from short sleeve, short sleeves to short sleeves in three generations. What happened? The transition is not by capability, it's by blood, blood lines. The next generation takes over. They did not build it. They did not work on it. They just enjoy it and use it and slowly kill it. Rarely it survives the generations. I have a, right now I have a client in Mexico, third generation, 
still going like prime. I will tell you how. They don't appoint the managing director by bloodlines, by competence. Separation of ownership from management. Owners, very good, family. Management, uh-uh. Management is professional, sorry. Yeah, but I'm a family. Take dividends, don't manage. It must be by competence, not by bloodlines. The transition of adolescence is the most complicated part of the life cycle. Moving from a gogo -go company, from a founder to a professionally managed company. Difficult transition. You need to do, in the, let me tell you how we do it in Adidas. And you have Greg here to help me out to describe it to you. The first thing we do is do a diagnosis of the company. What are the problems? So we're not building something ignoring reality. It's like in medical profession, before we do surgery, before we do anything, is a checkup, blood checkup to see who, what, what, what do you have. Okay, we try to find out what are the problems of the company. What is normal, what's abnormal. So what do we have to remove before we do anything else? What do we have to remove? Next, you have to build people's empowerment to solve their own problems. Because we are not going to tell you what to do. You have to develop your own mission, you have to develop your own structure, you have to develop your own reward system, because you are taking over the company. So it's not somebody, from now on manage. <laughs> it has to be transition. Then we have to do with the top management mission, with the founder there. What is the mission? Where are we going? So we have to transfer the vision of the founder to be the vision of the whole company now. They share the vision. Then you have to develop the structure. Because up to now it was based on about who knows whom, you know, around people. Usually it's a very messy organization. Now we have to professionally structure. You're going to find out a lot of holes. Oh my God, we have nobody for this. We have nobody for this. Nobody for this. You're going to find a lot of holes. Now that we have a structure, who makes the decisions? You have to transfer authority down. And how do you control it? Don't make a mistake. Again, building trust, building respect. Then, bring somebody to start managing the company, one piece at a time, under. And you're moving up slowly, one at a time. What you delegate first is the P roles. Then you delegate the A roles. But you keep, what do you keep? E and I. Now, when everything is running very well, you can delegate the E. Marketing manager, strategic planning, okay, finance. What you're doing, somebody else does it. You're keeping the I. You see what's going on here? Do you see the sequence? It's not an easy sequence to do. A disease institute is also at that stage. And being a doctor doesn't mean I don't have diseases. They're going through the same difficulties, trust me, like our clients do. Except that in my case, I know why. And I know what to do. I wish I could have an adhesive to help me. Because I'm doing it by myself. All right, guys, here we are. Finally, all the four roles, P, A, E, and I. In prime, see, at every stage there's a problem. Here the problem is, oh, cash, 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 ah, money, money, we are dying. Here the problem is, Management is crazy, going nuts, going in too many directions. How the hell do we control this monster up there at the top? Here the problem is how do I make the transition? 
How do I make the transition? How do you develop A? Here you know what the problem is? Talent. We don't have enough management. We don't have management. We need more people, better people. How come you didn't worry about people? <laughs> I was too busy to worry about people. Now finally I can worry about people. Finally I can worry about people. Good training, good people, good talent, you know, now I can do that. Here, you want revenue. Here you want market share. Here you want profits. Now is the time to get A. So we look at the cost, profits. Here we can do revenue and profits. In the prime, revenues are growing and profits are growing. That's why it's prime. But you will not stay in prime long enough. What will go down? E. Okay. Of, okay, normal problems of prime. They feel good, we made it. We are the leaders, we are, you know, very good. What's abnormal? Feeling good. <laughs> we made it. We don't have to worry more anymore. We made it. They also have a suffer from problem, I call it the monkey, monkey syndrome. Let me tell you what the monkey syndrome is. How do you catch a monkey, do you know? You look for a tree and make a hole in the tree, which is a size a little bit bigger than the hand. A little bit bigger than the hand. Put in the hole a coconut. Now the monkey goes to catch up the coconut. He grabs the coconut. Coconut plus the hand is bigger than the hole. Now what happens? He doesn't want to let go of the coconut. You catch a monkey. Same thing in the prime company. We made it. But there is a new technology. There is somebody developing something new in the, you know, in, a, in the garage. It's a threat. I don't want to do it because I don't want to threaten the business I'm already in. And what happens? They don't let go of the coconut. That's what happened to IBM. Mainframes, mainframes. What about the PC? No, we don't want to compete with our mainframe. We don't want to compete with our mainframe. What happened to IBM? What happened to Xerox? So problem with prime companies, they, have, they don't want to let go of their success. They don't want to cannibalize what they already have. Guys, in order to have something new, you have to let go of the old. Sorry. And the way to do that, you cannot do it within the company. Because the old will kill the new. They don't let the new grow. You have to build on the side. It's called a nursery. You build it on the side. Many companies are doing this in Israel. They have the research centers in Israel. Google, Microsoft. All the big companies have the research centers in Israel far away from America, because they don't let it kill it. You put it there, they kill it. You need it far away, so they can grow by themselves, otherwise they will get killed. You have to put it on the side. It's called a nursery. <sighs> Monkey syndrome. And now we're starting to age. When the E goes down, The company starts going down. Okay, here we go. All right. Now look guys, we don't have much time, we have 10 minutes. Here is the difference between growing companies and aging companies. It is not, at this stage, it's not showing on the balance sheet. It's not showing on the P&L. It's showing somewhere else that you're starting to age. I want you to write down what I'm going to tell you now. The most important asset a company has, I repeat, the most important asset a company has does not show on the balance sheet. 
Ще на тъм дебалъши. Те му си поднат асет. How do you know what it is? It is something you cannot buy and you cannot sell. What is the asset that you, a company has you cannot buy and you cannot sell? And it's not on the balance sheet. Your culture. Culture. I'm going to tell you the essence of the culture. Mutual trust and respect. Acceptance of diversity. Willingness to learn from others who think differently. Trusting the system. Trusting each other. Trusting the leadership. Culture. And what is happening here? Watch it. The culture is changing. Oh, but there is a... There is a... Pro type here. Uh, promoted the case around here. See, in a growing company, success takes from taking risk. In an aging company, success is by avoiding risk. No, no, let's not do that, let's not do that. Okay, look at this. I, I can talk for hours on every subject here, but you should read it in my book. Okay? There is a change in the culture, and your most important asset is going under. The culture of a growing company is now a culture of an old company. Look at this. This is the most important. In a growing company, everything is permitted unless specifically forbidden. Do it. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. In an aging company, everything is forbidden unless specifically permitted. Ask permission first. Age, old, not moving, not taking risk. Problems are opportunities. Opportunities are problems. Oh my God, we have this opportunity. What the hell are we going to do? <laughs> old. So you can tell if the company is aging just by looking at the culture. Same thing with the person. Same thing with the person. Oof. In a growing company, marketing and sales are strong. In an aging company, accounting, finance, legal, human resources, they are the ones who run the show. It changes. The power structure changes. Excuse me. Oh. Can you elaborate a bit more on the form and function? Say it again. Can you please elaborate more on form and function on previous slides? Sure. Okay, you play tennis. The function is to hit the ball over the net. The form is how do you hit it. That's why a good trainer would tell you, don't start playing tennis competitively prematurely. Because you will be doing it wrong and you're, play, you're developing a wrong way of doing it. First, learn to do it right. That's a form. Then the function of hitting it will come later. So the form will be, we follow the rules. The function is for what purpose? What result does it produce? What is the function of these rules? So you see in an in a example, in an aging company, you ask somebody, why are we doing this? I don't know, it's a policy. But why is it a policy? Nobody knows anymore. You go even to the president, he says, I don't know. It has been a policy in this company forever. What has happened? The, the, the form is now running the show, not the function. Understand? Why are we having it? So it is going through the, through the emotions without knowing why. Okay? That's bureaucracy. Bureaucracy goes through the emotions and they don't even know why. <laughs> Playing tennis, I do it right all the time. But the ball is there, but I'm doing it right. Form, no function. I'm doing it wrong, function, but no form. 
Are you with me? Okay. Here is more. There is a lot. Oh, every one of them we can talk for hours. Oh, this is important. Organization profit oriented. They forget the clients. They forget the, the, the only money, 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 money. The, that's why they don't allow new products, no new innovations. You know, they're killing the babies to get maximum profits. Okay? They get the profits, but they're killing the baby. They don't have babies. Oh, this is important. The mistake is, here, if you change the leadership, you will change how the company behaves. Because the leader is very important in the how the organization behaves. Function over form. Here, changing the leader will not change the company. Because the company is a form now driving the behavior, not the leader. The rules, the policies, the standard operating procedures are running the company. You understand? The system takes over, not the person. So the mistake many times they do it, I have it all the time in our consulting. The company is in the aging side, fire the president. I tell them, guys, you did not solve the problem. The car is not driving. Fire the driver. The problem is the fucking engine. Check the engine. Ah, I need a driver that will check the engine, yes. Because this driver is not checking the engine, fire the driver. But the engine is what I try to change, not the driver. Changing the person here will change behavior. Here, no. Here it is, the system is stronger than the person. Am I, am I, am I, am I clear, guys, clear? I hope so, okay. Management drives the organization. Organizational culture drives the management. The leader of the company and the bureaucracy does not manage the company anymore. Do you know that? He's reacting to the company rules, following the rules of the company. That's why it's a bureaucracy. He becomes the slave of the organization rather than the master of the organization. Okay. Here you need consultants. Here you need insultants. Okay. All right, guys. You see that? That's how the company died. How do you lose E? Wrong leader. When you're in adolescence, you remember, we needed, we needed which role we needed in adolescence? What role did we need in adolescence? We needed to bring what? A, right? Remember? So we hired an A. The problem with A is they forget to leave. They came into the company and they now don't leave because the A's and don't leave, they stay there. And now you have prime A. Mm. Now we don't need an A anymore, we need a new E to get new birth to the company. Now you have an A running a company. It will age the company. In other words, leadership depends on where are you in the life cycle? One of you during the last break asked me, how do I know what person I need to lead the company? I told her, wait until I tell you. Depends where the company or the unit is in the life cycle. For a courtship, I need an E. For an infant, I need a P. For a go-go, I need a PE. That's why founders are always PEs. Now we are going to go next step. I need an A. Now I'm coming to prime. I need an I. I'm starting to age. What do I need? E. To, re to revive the company because it's aging. Do you see that? Yeah. I need an E now. So depending where you're in the life cycle, you need a different leadership. And by the way, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. How you raise your children depends how old the children are. If they're babies, you baby them. When that little ton at them, you tell them, put some order, right? 
when they're old, when they're already 40 years old, you stop babying them or they're going to leave and not come back. You have to change your style of parenting depending where your children are on the life cycle. Same thing with the company. You need to change your style depending where the company is in the life cycle. If you cannot change your style, get out and bring somebody else or you're killing the company. The structure is wrong. That can age the company. Example. Oof, I have to stop. Very fast. Here is a dysfunctional structure. But it's not for an infant ergogo. For an infant ergogo, this is okay. But in prime, an organization in prime, big organization, established organization. Vice President for Sales and Marketing. Vice President for Production and Engineering. Chief Financial Administrative Officer. Thank you very much. What happened? Sales is P, marketing is E. The moment you put P and E together, which orientation will win? P or E? P. Short term always wins the long term. Then marketing, I call, my, when you have a vice president for sales and marketing, I'm not talking about Gogo company, don't forget it. Because the marketing is done by the CEO anyway. Finance is done by the CEO, so don't forget the structure. But when I look at an established company, and I see sales and marketing together, I call marketing transvestite. It looks like a woman, oh, it's a man. Same thing here, marketing, marketing. They're not doing marketing, they're doing sales support. Because P dominates. They're doing sales support, but they're called marketing. They're not, they're not marketing at all. Marketing should drive sales, not sales drive marketing. So what happened? Marketing is sales. That's why it's called Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Have you ever heard a company called Vice President for Marketing and Sales? No, always sales in front of it. Sales is more important than marketing. Marketing becomes sales support. So what happened? No E. Industrial engineering with production. Production is P. Engineering is E. You know what, is, what engineering is doing? They're not doing engineering. They're doing maintenance. It's called engineering, but they're doing maintenance. Why? Because they're serving the P. The E is serving the P. It's a lie. They're not doing E. You put finance and accounting together. Accounting is running the show, but it's called finance. But it's not doing fucking finance at all. It's doing accounting. So what happens? No E. P, P, A. Where is the E? The founder is a, the president is a. <laughs> Bravo! There is no either, he's a longer, he's dreaming. Doesn't work. The structure is wrong. Ah, this is the important one. We are the leaders of the market. We have 30% of the market. Our next competitor is only 15%. When you are so big in comparison to your competition, do you feel competitive or do you feel comfortable? Comfortable. The moment you feel comfortable, the E goes down. We are doing fine. Competition is so much behind us. We are the leaders. I took a company from 30% market share to 3% market share in half an hour. How? And now they all woke up. Widen the market. Bigger market. Ooh, they were in the paint business. I said, why do you use paint? Because we need protective surfaces. What else can protect surfaces? Oh my God, you're only 3% of the market. <laughs> ah, redefine. Redefine the business. If you're too big, it's no good. Always be small and still fighting. Always small and fighting. Don't be too big. Or cup is disintegrating. No common vision, no common values. Non-aligned interests. Aristocracy. 
a lot of money, but nothing happens. Everybody is very comfortable, who knows whom. They always dress very nicely. They always dress like for a funeral or for a wedding. You don't know which, you know. So. You go to the, to the board of directors meeting, darkness, pictures of the founders on the wall. Nobody is offending nobody. They all talk very nicely. It appears under certain circumstances, we might assume, however, on the other hand, what the hell is he talking about? We are losing market share, but nobody says that. No, you, 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 you're very civilized. This is a civilized company. They have a lot of money, but it's dying. It's dying. P goes down. First E goes down, okay? How you behave is more important than how, okay, all of this. It's only in my book, guys. Okay. Meeting room is dark. You know, everything is very civilized. I worked for, I consulted Bank of America, 1982, so now I can tell you, it was long, long enough. The board of directors room had a door to the board of directors room, very big, two big doors, look like the tablets of Mount Sinai. And when you approach the gates, the doors open, it's like, you know, like this. And you go to the room, and long mahogany table, microphones in front of everyone, darkness of the wall, pictures and art, everybody dressed in very formal, who dares to say, hey guys, we're losing market share? It's not, it's not civilized, you know? It's like cursing in, in, in church, you know? So everybody's talking in, uh, it appears under certain circumstances, we might assume, however, on the other hand, what the fuck are they saying? They're losing market share, they're going under, that's what's going on, okay? Oh. Anyway, it's in my book. Oh yeah, financial engineering. We are losing. So why don't we raise prices? Instead of really changing the product, the easiest thing is to raise prices. So now we are still making money. But what are they doing? They're killing the market. I call it feeding the dog with his tail until the whole dog disappears in his own rectum, you know, the whole dog disappears. They're, they're, eating, the, they're eating this. When I look at an aristocratic company, I do not allow them to look at revenues. You can raise revenues by increasing prices. Tell me number of units sold, and you will see the number of units going down. Next question. What percentage of sales is repetitive going down? Revenues is camouflage. Here we start attacking each other. The company is losing market share, negative cash flow. Which hunt? Who takes the responsibility? Who is responsible? Whom are we going to fire today? And whom do they usually fire? The E's, if any E is left, is fired. In a country, when a country is in trouble, whom do they persecute? The entrepreneurs. They attack the entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs leave the country, go to another country. Or the ethnic groups that have ethnic E, like. The Chinese in, in, in Indonesia, the Greeks in Turkey, Armenians in Turkey, and the Jews all over the world. Whenever there is a trouble, anti-Semitism goes through the roof. Because the E's stand out. They attack the E's immediately. Predictable. Okay. And now, 
Vsi bote dying here. Rumors, conspiracy, knives are drawn, backstabbing, scapegoats, whom are sacrifices, whom are we going to fire today? This is all what's happening in this stage of the life cycle. Okay, fighting for each other. And now it's bureaucracy, A. The only thing that's left is A. P is not important, E is not important, I is not important. Come on time, live on time, and make no waves. That's the rule. The company will die unless external force supports it. A bureaucracy does not depend on the market. If it depends on the market, it dies because it doesn't serve the clients. It depends on government support. And government support comes from taxation that you have to pay whether you like it or not. That's how they survive. They don't rely on the market. Rely on taxation. See? Politics. But everything is fine. There is no stress. Just come on time. Don't make waves. Just do what you're told. Everything is fine. You want to find happy people in a bureaucracy. There is no stress. There is no stress. That's why in Soviet Union, there are many people that long for the Soviet Union times. There was no stress. There is nostalgia, this communism. But there is, there is no integration. There is no left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Ah, and because of that, what happens? Corruption. Why? You need to do something. They don't talk to each other. So I do it to make to each other to make it happen. You see this? That's how corruption is born. Here it is, customers develop elaborate approaches to bypass. That's a corruption. That's a corruption. Because the A doesn't work. And you're dead. When there is no commitment and no resources to stay alive. Okay, I think we are done. A healthy organization is synergetic. Yes, let's go. Diversity. Complementary functions, operating with mutual respect, commonality of interest, working with mutual trust. And you need to develop it. It doesn't come automatically. You have to develop it. And let me finish by telling you what the leader is in the disease methodology. You see my hand? Usually we believe the leader is this finger. That's why all over Europe, the leaders are on a horse pointing the finger. The why? Hmm? True or not true? Wrong finger. This is the P finger. Do this, do this, do go, do go, do P-E. Let's go in that direction and do what I tell you. What is the most important finger in a disease now? This is for a young company. It's good for a young company. But if you want to have a long company, a life, what is the most important finger? Why? It's the only finger that works with every finger. It is the finger that makes it a hand. If you don't have a thumb, there is no hand. This is now, now bad news for you guys. Ready? This is masculine energy. This is... Come on. Come on. Masculine energy. Feminine energy. I'm sorry, guys. Our time is over. 
I'm serious. I'm serious. Women are taking the world for a good reason. They provide I. Some women think the way to succeed is to be a man. Don't do it. Be a woman. That is what the world needs now. Integration, love, listening, motherhood. This is over. And men can be feminine too. You have to be an integrator. And women can be men, don't. I'm not talking about sexual organs, I'm talking about energy. When we are in front of a new world now, guys. The world of feminine energy. That is the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.